This should probably make the most of the EDC right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now. all right. Yeah. So, I see some people already joining in. So, feel free to take a seat inside the Krusty Krab or just explore around the environment uh, and the stage while the short starts. Uh, we'll begin with the introduction in brief. And, Pookie, are you here already with us? Yes, I'm he I am here. I am here. Can you hear me? Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you well. Hola. Ooh, let's go. Are you ready for this? Yeah, ready. <laughs> excitement <laughs> let's give let's give him a few more minutes to to come yeah. in run all right what a crowd we're all mute but you know okay boop, boop. yeah you should be a little bit shy <laughs> In this kind of spaces but yeah, we're here to break the ice as well <laughs> yeah. what, a, what a crab what a crab what a crab and my boy yep some of us are born oh. crabs and some of us are born funny <laughs> <laughs> all right that's awesome so just a couple more minutes to see if someone's still trying to get into the space and and yeah we'll start with the introduction right away okay just Absolutely. to start for those of you that that's your first time in spatial just a quick tutorial uh i guess you already figured out how to walk you can walk using the wasd keys or teleport using your uh, left click button and uh, as this is a comedy show we'll be needing some reactions from you so I'm going to go pretty quickly uh, through some of these basic reactions one of the important ones letter C for, for clapping so let's just uh, start with, uh, with a round of applause starting to show thank you thank you please uh yeah don't don't forget also if you if you like it this recreation of the sunken blame of sorry sunken blame crusty crop you can hit the heart button in the upper right uh corner uh from your screens uh also you you'll see a button from reactions i think you may have already figured it out that you can say yes you can wave and say hello so hello and you can do some cool dance move uh, with uh, numbers one through five in your keyboard. You can also change these reactions. Um, you can change and edit all the hotkeys. So you can make the number one doing a laugh, um, a laugh emoji, or you can change them and customize them as you. So, all right. Uh, here we are, the first edition of Deep Fried Comedy. This is our experiment, and I thank you, uh, Puki Amsterdam, also for this initiative of doing a comedy show um, in an immersive environment uh, here in a spatial. So uh, this is uh, hopefully the first of many comedy, uh, in this case, afternoon, but for some of you, it may be night. Uh, comedy night for some of you maybe comedy morning that's the good thing about the facial web and yeah all joining from different locations 
So as I told you before, this is the Krusty Krab, the recreation of uh, Sunken Blimp. Uh, welcome here. And I want to introduce our guest comedian for this session of Deep Fried Comedy, Puki Amsterdam. And Puki, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about who she is. Uh, she's a science and tech enthusiast who has pioneered in virtual worlds for two decades already and has used them as an effective media platform to create fiction, films, web series, and game shows. Uh, she, she used to do this, and she does it in Second Life. If any of you is here an OG of the metaverse, you, you should know Second Life. Um, it's been around for quite some time. She's also a regular at the Comic Strip Club in New York, uh, in New York City, and had her first virtual comedy club in 2005. She's a great believer in live online avatar entertainment and of these kind of spaces as yeah, media platforms. And she has been writing about the metaverse since 2008. So we're here with a true OG of the virtual space. So I would like to welcome to the stage uh, Puki Amsterdam. Uh, and before we start, let's... Sorry, just gonna tell you a little bit about the dynamics for today. Uh, we'll do in two, um, two short, um, um, yeah, two short intervals of comedy, and in the middle we will do in a trivia, trivia, some questions for you. The uh, and the one who wins will be able to win a prize. So. Um, I will tell you the details later when we are at that part. So now, once again, let's please welcome Puki Amsterdam to the stage with a big, big, big applause. And thank you, Puki, for being here. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. Did you just see the Titanic ship go by? They're looking for that totally in the wrong place. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Camillo. And great to see you. You know, who knew when I met Harvey Weinstein all those years ago and he asked me up to his hotel room and I said no, that I would be playing at the Krusty Krab. Unbelievable. Glad to see you. I just flew in from the office. I'm here right now from the bedroom. Yes, the bedroom. Everybody been there, right? No, 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 not mine, but yours. How about the kitchen? Anyone here from the kitchen? Yes, I also refer to that as my second home. And you guys in the back, if you're here from the bathroom, if you are, please don't let us hear you flush because that moot button exists for a reason. Don't you wish you had one in real life? I mean it. What's that, honey? Oh, I'm sorry. I had you on mute. People say I look good. What do I do? How do I do that? Pookie, how do you do that? Besides being an avatar, I say it's easy. I lie. Yes, I do. I lie about my age. I say I'm 70. They say, oh, my God, you look great for 70. I don't know what I'm going to say when I'm 70. Maybe I'll say I'm dead. Oh, my God, you look great for dead. Won't be grateful, dead, but I'll still have a good-looking avatar. You better believe it. It is so great to be here. I even got a new headset for this. Has anybody ever gotten a new headset and had trouble, you know, opening the package? Yeah, you're either going to punch yourself in the face or draw blood. Neither of which you can see on my flawless avatar. Packaging is insane. It's more passive aggressive than Meghan Markle. Right. Is there a passive aggressive app yet? I mean, couldn't you imagine how useful would that be? You could use it as a scanner. Just run it over someone. Whoops, back off. Sorry, sucking all the oxygen out of the room in one, two, three. There are apps for absolutely every part of your life. Am I right? Apps to tell you how much sleep you get, how fast your blood is going, how your heart rate, how many steps you've taken, the minutia, the mini, mini minutia of your health, right? And that could lead to longer life or 
extreme paranoia. But come on, everyone has an app, right? And mine does something that's never been done before and that most people need. Okay, you didn't know this is Elevator Pitch Comedy Night. It's called, are you ready? The App Hole. And it tells you when you've been a jerk. That's right, a possible behavior modification tool that helps you cut down on your own boorish or even trollish behavior. With App Hole, if you get too angry, rude, abrasive, or OTT, you will gain damaging points or depending on the model, you will actually be tased into submission. But we're working that out right now through legal. You might run into a few problems. It monitors your social media. Are you arguing with someone on Facebook? Again, making rude remarks, being a bully. Your Apple rating will be used for future job interviews and be required on dating sites. Look for it soon in the app store so you can start asking yourself, how much of an app hole have I been today? And really, isn't it about time? Many, many, thank you, thank you. Many, many wonders of the avatar world and we are there. Always look great and much better, by the way, may I say, than you do in Zoom, right? I mean, hey. And you don't have to put on pants or a shirt. It is a super amazing thing. But there's a difference that happens, and it is this. In real life, the attractive human at the bar that you want so badly, I mean, you just hope and pray they have some sort of personality to match the way you look. Okay. Let's be honest, depending on how attractive they are, you just don't want them to burn the frickin' house down when you get them home. But when you meet someone attractive in a virtual world, and who, the problem is different. I mean, is that hot blonde really a blonde? You ask yourself, and right after that, are they really a male or male identifying or female? The list goes on because it's easy to look good in the metaverse where no one cares about the problems of the ugly. And I admit, I admit that I have taken liberties with my avatar. I've had a virtual nose job, chin job, breast job, and I've had my hands done too, but I don't know what to call it. One does, thank you, one does develop real relationships in virtual life and not just with AI, because let's face it, a robot girlfriend is better than no girlfriend at all. We are real people in the metaverse, but it is still very hard to explain around the family dinner table that Sergeant Zebra from Rec Room is not your imaginary friend, but someone you've actually fallen in love with and need to settle place for once we get out those Apple Vision Pros. Wouldn't that be amazing? love with holograms. I try to explain the metaverse to people, I really do. And sometimes I wonder why. I mean, do we want a million concurrent users? Do you know what kind of lag from hell that would be? Right. I don't think that we will ever be truly threatened by AI though, until they have AE. And what is that you may add? That's artificial ego. Now, the machines make decisions based on previous input, just judging the most likely outcome and, and ones that fit the prompts, let's be honest. But with an ego, watch out. Run. Run for your tiny, puny human life because this is what's going to happen with artificial ego. Sit down at your laptop and you hear, I can't believe you're wearing that today. It makes you look stupid or your smart ass phone will refuse to dial a number because your friend's phone didn't call them back. And Siri, don't even get me started. Sorry, I don't know that one. Will be said even more willfully and frequently than she does now.
is there another and there is another kind of future to imagine let's talk about the movies because with ae the chances huh of ai watching its own entertainment looms enough about you puny humans what films will ai want to see when they can choose not based on your netflix subscription or how brilliant wes anderson is they're not going to appreciate that but on a hot new piece of code i mean we can't even imagine it can we all i can think of when i think of will ai want entertainment is they're going to watch attractive and supple machines engaging in romantic and outrageous behaviors tune in to dai of our life remote control yeah remote control remember the remote control it's not a movie about how humans are controlled by their robot girlfriends although it could be but the actual thing we all use you know the first version was created in 1955 and i am old enough to recall how this simple device changed the relationships of so many people in the household i became much closer to my parents they needed me to be their own personal channel changer but when the remote came in man they obviously favored it over me spending hours with it and it really caused some problems i hid between the cushions of the couch for weeks hoping they'd look for me but no no machines are cool i dig machines you know that i'm a nerdy girl but robots are going to take over your job your girlfriend and have your parents like them better while you lay inside the couch for days hoping they'll look for you that got to happen i know that but honestly why why are we in such a damn rush to create machines which will be like humans you know it's going to happen they're just going to spend all their time on their version of the phone complaining about their boyfriend thank you thank you I do have a movie script. Yeah, babies. I have a movie script. Of course I have a movie script. It's called The Laughing Zombie. Here it is. A small town is invaded. Two stoners by the dumpster see these figures and they think it's this hot girl making out with their friend. It's not their friend. It's a zombie killing their friend, but they don't know this cuz they're high as kites and telling crude jokes, which makes the zombies laugh. Now, nobody knows this, but laughing will make a zombie's head explode. It's true. It's true. I bet you didn't know that. Try that next time. And no one knows that because when the zombies come, everybody's running and screaming. Nobody's ever stopped and trying to make a zombie laugh. Wrong move. All right, so the stoners run to tell the town's people and everyone now runs They got to find someone funny. Save us, save us, save us Jerry Seinfeld. Save us Larry David. But they can't. Their jokes fail because they're making too much money to be funny anymore and people are dying. The remaining towns people decide to run to RuPaul. RuPaul, RuPaul. RuPaul is standing on the stage. looking drop dead gorgeous blonde wig and is the hot zombie steps forward because there's always one right the hot zombie steps forward looks at RuPaul with lust and not just for food in his eyes RuPaul asks him to dance like to dance oh my god the hot zombie <laughs> embarrassed he fell for a man laughs nervously but his head explodes and then all the zombies in a massive wave of second hand embarrassment their heads explode and that my friend is how cross dressing will save the world. that's right i also have a video game a video vr game of course i do it's called prince of peace yes it's the world's first first person savior game the object is to talk all the maniacs into putting their weapons down finding love in their hearts and joining you on a journey 
of universal hope. Level up by remaining alive for one hour in the game, which isn't easy, by the way. And that will then enable you to smote out those who oppose you. Why don't we have character building? I swear, we need games that reward long-term decisions or we're going to die. And VR and zombies, I mean, I just got to say this. Isn't the world a scary enough place without putting on a gas mask indoors and worrying that a zombie is going to jump out of your refrigerator and kill you? Come on, the population, food, water, air, apocalypse, forget zombies. Are we not scared enough? Evidently not. Because after Prince of Peace, my next game will be called Die Laughing. Don't worry, it won't be released. The warning label never made it past the FCC. I don't want you to die, Mr. Bond. I want you to die laughing. Thank you, and thank you very much. All right, you bet. You bet. I, I like that crypto solo. Hey, you crazy guy. If I can do that. Yeah, yeah. All right. So... Thank you very much. This is great. I will be back. We're going to take a break for audience participation games, which does come with a prize from our sponsor. So please, please welcome the fabulous Camillo back to the stage. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Fuki, for that amazing presentation, the first trip. And so here we start with our first, uh, yeah, our first community activity today. And for Deep Fried Comedy today, we have trivia. And I'll tell you how this will work out. We'll have 10 questions, and the 10 questions have a topic in common, which is um, SpongeBob SquarePants. How many of you have watched the show? How many of you love it? We are right here at the Krusty Krab. So I guess some of you do know the show. Uh, so the first trivia night will be about the SpongeBob SquarePants. Don't worry, the questions are not hard at all. This is how this will play out. I will ask a question. And the first person to answer, the answers will be recorded only and only in the public chat. The first person to answer on public chat will get the point. The person who gets the most points will win the prize. And we will let uh, Pookie announce what the prize is. But it's uh, pretty nice. Uh, yeah, as Pookie just uh, pointed out, you can access this chat on the lower right part of the of screen. I will only record the first person to answer correctly to the question in the chat. Do not need to open your mics. So uh, who's ready for some trivia for the first question? Uh, let me hear a round of applause. Nice, nice. So we'll go with the first question, an easy one. And the first question is, what is the name of the SpongeBob pet snail? Yeah, it goes one point uh, for Mateus with second blame, uh, followed by Natalie and then Crypto Solo. So the first point goes to Mateus right now. And um, <laughs> yes. Uh, Pookie, you will be recording uh, who who answered first. Okay, uh, let's go with the with the second question right away. In, in which underwater city does SpongeBob live? Should I repeat the question? In which underwater city does SpongeBob live? What's the name of the city? We are right now in there. Exactly that. So this go with one point for Maximiliano. Uh, of course, this is a test about 
weakness, you're free to look them up, but you probably won't have time to answer correctly. So we go with the third question right now, and it's what's the name of the squirrel from Texas living under the sea? Oh, we go with Sandy and Arenita. It's the Spanish name of the, so it's actually a correct answer as well. But uh, but yeah, Sandy is the correct question. Arenita is the name in Spanish. So yeah, but actually, it's it is correct as well. So we go with the uh, we go for the fourth question, which is who is Mr. Krabs' arch rival who runs the Chum Bucket? Not giving advertisement to the to the competition here plankton that's the correct answer so hyperpolyan you have also one point uh pookie please help me recording a uh, number of points right now but we go now with the fifth question what instrument does squidward play Wait, who's a neighbor to SpongeBob plays an instrument? Which instrument is that? Go on to the next no question. Yet. No answers yet. Okay, so we go with the next one right now. Next question is What type of creatures is a SpongeBob friend Sandy? I already kind of like that was the answer for for the previous question it is actually the clarinet and for the next one natalie just said squirrel and it is a squirrel i had said that before I have guessed it correctly if you have been paying attention so for the next one pretty quickly what what does patrick star live under what is his home patrick star A rock and another po point for hyperpollen. Patrick Starr lives under a rock. Now we go to a more difficult one if you're not too familiar with the show. What is the name of Mr. Krabs' daughter who is a whale? Oh, well, and what is the name of Mr. Krabs' daughter his daughter is a well and a point for Matthias, which goes uh pearl is the name of his daughter indeed so now two more questions remaining pookie how are how are we in terms of points okay are you here with us Were there so two I more think... questions? There are two more questions, yeah. But I just wanted to do a recap of how are the points, how is everyone faring right now? That's right. Sunken Blimp has two right answers, and so does Hyper Palin. And so, I'm sorry, does Maximiliano. So we have a tie, a three-way tie, going into the final two questions. You might. Camilla, I'll have to come up with a tiebreaker. Oh, yeah, I have a tiebreaker ready, of course. So we'll next do that at the end is... after the next step. Go ahead, go. Sure. What is the name of a SpongeBob favorite superhero duo? So, SpongeBob favorite superhero duo. Right from Bikini Bottom, they ride one of the vehicles that parked in the outside. A one, three, two, one. One of them is Mermaid Man, indeed. Mermaid Man. Did they? And did Barnacle that? Boy. <laughs> yeah, those are. Camillo, Hyper Palin said Barnacle I, I Boys. Think... Is that right? It's Mermaid Man 
and Barnacle Boy. So Natalie also has it correctly. Oh, wow. We could give a point each. We could give a point each. Half a point each as well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, that's uh, fair. The other one that's good, and the last question, the last question also a little difficult. What is the name of the it's ghost big. pirate that occasionally haunts the Krusty Krab? Ghost pirate that haunts the Krusty Krab. Oh, I'm holding my I breath. I have many fans of SpongeBob SquarePants. Come on, come on. Okay, so let's re let's replace it. Um, <laughs> I will tell you the correct answer. It's the Flying Dutchman. Flying Dutchman is the ghost that usually haunts the bottom. Okay, just up. All right. Okay, now, now another. Uh, now I will replace the question with the last one. Just this last one, so so anyone can um answer it what kind of animal does uh, spongebob like to go catching fishing for sport jellyfish indeed we have all right this is around around this space so all right that was the last question bookie what was the final score of the activity that is fantastic. Hyper Palin is the winner. Yay, Hyper Palin. So, Pookie, now the stage is yours again. You're free to communicate Hyper Palin, uh, what is um, his price, and then we can get in contact with him. Uh, I will be doing that uh, so we can deliver on it. Okay. Thanks a lot for participating all. Well, thank you very much. And a big, let's give, let's give Hyper Palin a big round of applause. Please find us on LinkedIn and we will get your prize to you. It is a $25 Amazon gift card. So you really did win something with your brilliance, Hyper Palin. Thank you very much. All right, so here we are. Welcome back. Welcome back. That's exciting. Games, games, games are truly multi-billion dollar enterprises and everyone plays something. But, excuse me, one thing I don't understand and, you know, maybe it's because I'm a mother, is why there are no really, really important games out there like Take out the trash game, right? Or how, forget dinner dash, how about doing the dishes relay? Or what about that great sock pickup game? How about the leaving the toilet seat down game, right? These are games of skills. These are important games. You have just returned five phone calls and level up to the third date. This field is wide open, wide open. We have gotten so used to leveling up in games, but you know, do we think of it the same way, like leveling up in our relationships? We try to do that. We buy perfume, scent or fragrance to get us to the next level. Sometimes men buy new underwear instead of relying on that old standby, the men's underwear repair kit, yes. Do you know that's actually a thing? And that kit comes with iron-on patches, safety pins, an elastic waistband, duct tape, and whiteout. You thought whiteout was dead. Ah! Women and women identify. We have nothing like that. We just have underwear in seven different sizes. Yes, thank you. But... When we level up in here inside a virtual world, you have to kind of level up in a different way, mainly because we don't wear underwear or perfume. 
in the virtual world. You know, I was watching something the other night on the Discovery Channel and their new show on worldwide pestilence called Desperate Houseflies. Yes, and that's a show I'd really like to see. Uh, is a show called Renegade Bakers. Renegade Bakers, two Hells Angels show up on motorcycles and challenge you to a bake-off. And if you don't make better cupcakes than they do, they'll take your LED TV. Calling Grandma! I think about food. I think about the world starving. I think about the world starving children. Don't you? In between NFTs, in between NFTs and blockchain and the price of Roblox. Do you all think about the world starving children? I thought you would. And you know what would make that better? If they were artists. That right. Wouldn't you rather adopt a starving artist than a starving child? I mean, we can send them art supplies. It just doesn't sound as severe somehow. And the optics are the, on that are so much better. Because you know, looks are everything. Just ask my avatar. I've thought about entering politics. You know, this could be a way. There was a former president of the United States who actually got his start on stage and television with no experience whatsoever. I thought I would start grooming my political ascendancy that way. I have a slogan, vote for me. I won't let those bastards get away with anything. Prove it. I have a couple of ex-husbands who will testify to that in open. And, you know, between me, you, our avatars, and our raincoats, the God we choose says more about us. See, I'm going to jump to God now. than it does about them. Because we did create God, to a certain extent, in our own image. So follow me here. If your God wants burning in hellfire, you might be a little angry. If your God loves all oh, the little children and the flowers and the trees you might be a happier person of course if your god loves all the little children a bit too much there might be a problem thank you and i have a problem i have a problem with the bible with one of the first stories in the bible as i can't understand why adam and eve in the garden of eden were forbidden to eat from the tree of knowledge. What was up with that? Why not the tree of dumbass? I mean, come on. I don't want to say that stupid people make better worshipers, but there might be an argument for that in debate club. That's right, coming soon to a metaverse near you. We do live in a time of faith-based politics. You don't have to prove what you believe. And so I want to go directly uh, to that, yes, I'm a believer. I believe that you believe in God. But for me, it's a little confusing because I know there's one human make and model throughout this beautiful earth, and yet so many gods, so many gods. So I would have to say that, that man created God in his own image. Why? To tell women what to do because they needed a higher authority then mom, let's face it. Let me paint you this picture. Sunday rolls around. Sydney is at home. Fix the stairs, Sydney. You said you'd do them on your day off. No, dear. God, God has told me not to work today, and I must obey him. He also says I run the household. Anything else, I'll be on the porch smoking my cigar. Thank you. And my God... Oh, if my God was in charge, she would have said to Adam and Eve, okay, you're curious. You passed the first test. Now I'm going to give you some real skills, like learning how to build a metaverse. You know, I love people. I love men. But I think that we have shortchanged them somehow. I mean, the greatest thing that a guy can do is hit kick, dunk, club, or bat a ball. That's the height of hero worship around the world. And I get it. But 
aren't we aren't we infantilizing men just a teeny weeny itsy little bit like the best thing we can do is play with a ball oh you can play, play with a ball real good that is so wonderful i think i think we we gotta ask more i think we gotta ask more for from people and we and we do and we do um you know i just want to say you hear some men and you think where the hell did this guy come from was he born out of some other guy's apple nope i'm gonna go big and i'm gonna go large here because all men and i mean it all men are of women born it is the only way you can currently get onto the planet and if that little boy does not listen to the large woman with the boobs when he's a tiny baby, he's gonna die. That's a lot of power. I really don't know how how that has escaped us, uh, women. You know, that's a lot of power. So there are really, and I ask, are there really just three kinds of men in the world besides athletes? The ones who love their mothers, the one who don't, and the ones who wanna be their mothers. But look, I get it. And I have personally the utmost respect for anyone who understands the healing power of makeup, high heel. And that is power. Power we really should not forget as women in the boardroom, in the bedroom. And true story, I was actually on my way here tonight to the crab and coming down in the elevator, a guy grabbed me from behind. You know, he grabbed my tush. And I turned on him, arms out, mom Kimbo, and I said loudly, you face the corner, young man. You are getting a time out. But you know, I think, I think I was a little harsh with him because he turned back to me with tears in his eyes and he said, don't matronize me. That's right. Thank you, thank you. I'm not always so nice. No, sometimes when I'm particularly upset, I stand on the 10 items or less aisle at the food store and I say, um, I'm sorry, are those a dozen eggs? Excuse me, is that a package of napkins? There must be 400 count in there. You are so on the wrong line, bucko. So on the wrong line. And some other thing that upsets me Another wrong line out there is that the entire commercial application of the metaverse, I think, not the entire, but a lot of it's been wrong. Brands trying to get people to go to hamburger town where you can't even eat to match up burger stacks. I mean, come on, yawn. Companies need to sponsor experiences instead, and that means entertainment. Not just concerts, but series, news shows, talk shows, game shows user-created content. That is what's gonna bring people in more organically and make them stay because that's sticky. People wanna go where there's something to do. You begin as an aristocratic lobster or a wandering kangaroo or incognito yak, and it might look like the bar in Star Wars, but baby, everybody knows your name. You are much more than a data point in here. Isn't that right, Pierre Cartoon? You are a much loved member of the Avatar family. And after a while, you start seeing the same folks. And instead of wondering what to do, you're hanging out here. Here, my children, come to comedy clubs, hang out, come to karaoke night. You know I'm going to do it. And for the comics in the audience, and you know who you are, this is an amazing platform. It's disease proof, gas pipes proof, clean laundry or underwear proof. Weather, shower proof, personal hygiene proof. All you have to do is log in. Let's build this thing. So good night, good morning, good day, and goodbye for now. I want to wish everyone a great, great trip to the next group. End commuting trauma. Live and play where you work. You have been the biggest and the best audience I've ever had. And I don't just say that to every audience. I am Pookie Amsterdam. Thank you for coming down. Check out the app at the crowd.
All right. Thank you, Kuki, and thank you all for coming to this first Spice Comedy, our first event of this type here in Spatial, uh, riding the recreation of the Krusty Krab uh, by Sunken Blimp. Uh, just uh, uh, to also extend an invitation, we also do other types of events. We have an academic short talks event, Dive Life, that has been going on for over a year now with uh, more than 40 speakers. Um, and next week, we are having another Dive Life with uh, Phoebus Angelus, an experimental musician. Uh, we will also be doing karaoke night and with Cookie, we plan on doing uh, more of this deep fried comedy so you can join us. So feel free to follow us uh, in, and, and also Pookie in all of our social media. We are Sunk and Blimp. Uh, we do 3D design and augmented reality and virtual reality environments uh, for all of you to enjoy. So you're welcome here anytime at the Krusty Krab. And by all means, let us know if you have any crazy ideas that you want to implement. We're always open to, to discuss them and bring them to reality. So thank you all for coming. And this was Deep Tried Comedy. Thank you. Yeah, Sunken Blimp. Let's go. Awesome. Also, 